I'm going to do a couple videos about why good communication from your land surveyor is so important. So one of the things that Danny and I work really hard at here at Redefine Horizons, we try to maintain good communication with our clients and we try to be clear and easy to understand. And I'm going to talk about in another video, I'm going to talk about four specific ways we do that. I'm not just, uh, you know, being warm and fuzzy. There's some very specific things we try and do to, uh, to communicate well with our clients. What I want to do in this video is talk about why that's so important. And I'm going to give you three reasons before I do that. Let me tell you a real quick story that helps illustrate why this is so important. So when I was a young surveyor, I wasn't licensed yet. I was working on a project. It was a, a project we were building two new large diameter water pipelines from the river. I think it was a Feather River. So a Feather River over to a water treatment plant. So I was working on the boundary survey. We needed to locate the the I don't know. There's three or four parcels this pipeline crossed. It wasn't a, wasn't a really long pipeline. The three or four parcels the pipeline crossed went some right of ways and uh, we needed to locate all of those and then we needed to locate this existing easement. Uh, so there was a there was an existing pipe that was in the city been using and that, that pipe was going to be, I don't think it was going to be replaced, but it was going to be supplemented by these two much larger pipes. And the city really wanted to try and fit everything into the same easement because they didn't want to have to have to deal with right away acquisition on this project. So. We put the boundary survey together. It was a real challenge. It was certainly a challenging boundary survey, but one of the conclusions that we made and as part of our work on the, on the right of way survey is that we couldn't definitively locate that pipeline easement. Uh, it was just poorly written. There weren't any monuments. And so there was some uncertainty about, about where that, uh, exactly that easement was located. And so I had gone to a, to a conference or a workshop and uh, I think it was a, actually it was a workshop by Evan Page and he talked a little bit about survey narratives and uh, Evan Page, one of my mentors, I look at him as one of my mentors. And so what I was trying to do as a young surveyor was start to get in the habit of preparing a surveyor report. And I'm going to do some more videos about surveyor reports, what should be in them, how they're used. But <laughs> this may have been the very first project that I prepared a survey report, surveyor report, boundary survey report. And in that report, I talked about why we couldn't locate the easement with certainty and, and what that, what the potential impact of that was and how much uncertainty I thought there was in our location. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, this project goes to construction and the farmer that owned the big chunk of the land there that the next to the river that the, that the pipeline ran through, uh, suspected that those those new pipes, two giant pipes were being put in outside of the existing easement. And so he sued. He sued the city, he sued the contractor, and he sued the engineering company that did the design. The company I worked for at the time was a sub to the engineering company. And make a long story short, my company ended up participating in a in a payment to settle that dispute. And the whole reason why my company had to pay was because I didn't properly date that report and we couldn't prove when we delivered that information to the design team. So the whole question about my company's culpability in that came down to when did we alert to the design team that, that there was a problem and was it early enough in the process? And basically <clears throat> my company paid tens of thousands of dollars to report a claim uh, to, to help settle that claim because I didn't have, <clears throat> I didn't have good, uh, I had good documentation, but it wasn't properly dated and I didn't have a good record of when it got communicated to the client. So one of those things, one of the things I learned in that situation is how good, how good communication is really, really important and how failure to communicate and to properly document things can have a huge impact on a project. That's one of the reasons why you hire an older surveyor, not a young surveyor, right? So hopefully an older surveyor has learned from some of his mistakes in the past. So, I mean, and I'm sure there's other surveyors that have similar stories. So there's there's three things, three reasons why good communication from your land surveyor on a project is so important. And when I say project, it could be a land development project or an infrastructure project, or it could just be a real estate transaction that the land surveyor is working on. So let's go over those three reasons. The first reason it's so important that your land surveyor be a good communicator is because his input is going to shape the final form of the project. And when I say the land surveyor is going to shape the final form of the project, I mean that in a very literal way. He is really going to actually shape the footprint of that project on the ground. 
So the land surveyor, one of the things he's going to do early on in a project is he's going to determine the size and the dimensions of the parcel or the right-of-way that's going to be developed. He's going <clears> to <throat> probably survey the topography, try and communicate the terrain to the design team. And uh, in most cases, early on in, in the project, especially on the private side, uh, the land surveyor really plays the role as a private land planner. So he's going to be looking at the zoning. He's going to be trying to figure out, you know, what possible design alternatives are available to the developer if it's a development project. And he's going to be looking maybe at proposed lot configurations. He, uh, even if it's just a real estate transaction, there's no development plan in the near future. A surveyor might be looking at uh, whether or not the current use of the property is an allowed use. Uh, or if it's potentially not an allowed use, he might be looking at how the neighboring properties are being used and if those are allowed uses under the current zoning and planning. So that role the surveyor plays early on in the project is really important. It's going to shape the ultimate form of the project on the ground, what gets built. So it's really important that the surveyor communicate about all those issues uh, with the project team and that he's, he's clear in judgment calls and decisions that he's made. The second reason it's really important for a surveyor to have good communication is the land surveyor's work is going to be relied, uh, relied upon by others, members of the project team. And again, this applies whether we're talking about land development or infrastructure or just a, a real estate transaction. So if it's just a, a real estate transaction, just property being bought or sold, you know, who's going to rely on the land surveyor's work? Well, the real estate broker may rely on it. The lender is going to, is probably going to rely on that work. They want to know they're getting good, good collateral, good title to the land. The title company could very well rely on the land surveyor's work and the land attorneys, any land attorneys that are involved are likely going to rely on the land surveyor's work. So even on just a buy sell transaction, uh, there's a lot of people that rely on the surveyor's work. Uh, in a development situation, in addition to those parties that we just mentioned, you're going to have a design team that relies on the surveyor's work. So that could be civil engineer, structural engineer, architect, other types of engineers. They're all going to rely on the information a land surveyor provides. So it's really important that he communicate well and he provide that information in a clear manner that everybody can, can understand and use. And finally, the third reason you want to get good communication from your land surveyor is because he can really help identify and mitigate risks early on in a project. So you really want to get a good set of boots on the ground. You want a good land surveyor that you trust that you've got a good working relationship with. And I and I tell people a lot, they need if you're involved in real estate, you really need to have a relationship with a land surveyor you trust. So what kind of issues might the land surveyor find? Well, he could find issues with physical encroachments on the property. He could identify issues with the land title. Uh, potentially, he could find problems in the tax assessment records. He could find evidence of un unauthorized use, maybe unwritten rights that have been acquired in the property. Um, he could find issues with uh, fire risk, flood risk, site access. Um, there's all kinds of things that I'm looking for as a land surveyor when I get on site. And so because we're, we're usually one of the first people on site, one of the first people involved in the project, it's really important that, that your land surveyor is looking for those issues taking the opportunity to communicate those issues to you as a project owner or real estate professional, and also offering potential solutions to fix problems that might come up so that the project can move forward and the land can be developed. So those are three reasons why good communication is so important uh, from your land surveyor on a project.